Hey guys, you might have seen the cover I recently did on Raw Deal uh, by Junior Thompson, aka Terry Thompson. Uh, today I'm going to be doing the lesson part of this. Now I have to thank Michael Bod for sending me uh, this song. He's a top tier member. As a top tier member, he gets to request a song, and what a song. It's a great tune. The guitar playing in it's fantastic. There's heaps of stuff going on. Um, I think of it kind of as a, a bit of a trailblazer. It's that it's it's you know mid fifties, nineteen fifty six, I believe, and um, it's you know using minor pentatonics, major pentatonics. There's uh, really cool little syncopated chord fragments. It was really the the pioneering era of that you know um, hillbilly rockabilly stuff. So um, this is a great one to learn. Now you don't have to learn every lick note for note, but it's something you might sit through. This lesson, something you might sit through, so you can pick up little bits and pieces. Or you might want to learn the whole thing note for note. The options there. If you do want to learn it note for note, it's definitely going to help if you've got the full transcription, which is um, available to my Patreon members. Um, but if not, doesn't matter. You can sit down, watch along, have a good time, and hopefully learn a few licks, etc. Um, I'm wearing a Western shirt today. I've gotten into it just as I did for the cover. I actually tucked it in this time as well. Um, and uh, speaking of Patreon members, I have to thank uh, Alan Goldstein, Philip Katzwinkle, uh, and that's it. I've actually got Junior Thompson there. He's not a Patreon member. He played this song in my notes there. So, um, yes, thanks, uh, Alan and Philip, for joining. Um, and keep in mind, anyone that joins... Um, well, anyone that joined before March, which is pretty much today, uh, will we'll be able to go into the running to win this. There is a little hoop you will have to jump through, but that will be on the Patreon for, member for uh, the Patreon members. I'll post a video on how to enter that. Something very simple, just to get around a little loophole. Long story short. Now, uh, I guess we can get straight into the lesson. Now, the actual introduction uh, of the song... ...is that. So, um, I want to cover some of the theoretical things that are going on with this lesson as well. The song is in the key of A, and the introduction is based around the key of E. Or the, the chord of E, I should say. Because as soon as we hit a G sharp... Those two notes there are two core notes from an E chord. That's a G sharp and an E, okay? That's a G sharp, that's an E. So this first lick, five on the second string, five, seven, eight, nine, we're hitting the first string open. Then we're playing the seventh fret, first string open, fifth fret, first string open, fourth fret, first string open, third fret. We keep repeating, we just keep pedaling off that first string. And we play the second fret of, of the third, the A, and an octave high, we're playing an A again. So a great way to introduce the A, the, the arrival of the A chord. Okay. From there, so this is, that was bar one, two, three into four on the transcription. Um, in bar four, we start these little slot, this little slide onto the fifth fret of the second. Okay. Now I've kind of notated that first little slide, but there's a lot of that stuff going on. I've kind of left it for your interpretation, um, but the notes are there where you want to do all the little slides and slippery things that that um, Junior Thompson, Terry Thompson did. Whatever, you know, he, he actually had a couple of names, quite strangely. Um, so we've come off the... And we... Okay, so that was into bar five. We're just playing the, the fifth fret on the second string and the first string open. Okay, so we're going to bar six, and we go one and, oh sorry, one and two and three and four and, okay, so we're doing these double stops. Again, this is all the stuff that was really becoming um, a regular occurrence in the mid-50s, these kind of double stop licks. This is, we're in A now, we're doing that double stop at the tip of an A chord, you could think about that. Um, and then the little licks he's playing are based around this, the F sharp and the C here. Which, again, it's that almost became that rockabilly catch cry. It was, it was really happening by the early 50s, this sort of thing. Okay, G, uh, uh, Cliff Gallup, you know, all those guys were using that particular lick. So, uh, and actually that's a Charlie Christian lick, believe it or not. That's, there's a song called Grand Slam. These guys got a lot of their ideas from the, the jazz that was happening in the late 40s. Anyway, I've kind of gotten off the, the path there, so I'll keep going. So, bar six, 
One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so we're just kind of playing this rhythm. Oh, hang on, do that again. One and two and three and four and one and two. Okay, so again, you can get these rhythms really spot on. Or you can try and get a rough feel, listen to the tune and pick it up. It's really up to you. I'll try and facilitate a little bit of both. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Just watch, Go back and watch my right hand there. I think that's important. Okay, so that was into bar seven. We're now into bar eight. Um, one and two and three and four. Okay, and that was into bar nine. So what I did there, one and two and three and four and one. Oh, hang on. I slide back into that five. That's what I've notated there. So um, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So the rhythm that I played in bar eight was all based around the, the double stops on the five. And as we get to bar nine, I slide into the five like that on the second string, I pick up on the first, and again, we pedal off that first string, and we just descend, five, four, five, four, three, hit the two and the O together, now we move to the D chord, and we get this little fragmented chord here, so we play this rhythm, okay, so that's bar 10, and bar 11. Let me just make sure my computer matches that. Yep. All right. So in detail, what I'm doing here, I'm um, I'm playing the uh, third of the D chord. That's the F sharp there. Okay. Um, and I slide into that. I play the double stop on the 10. This is very similar to what we're doing over the A. The double stops up here. Okay. Let me just move this around a little bit. There we go. So, uh, and then up here, so that's 11 and the two tens. I hybrid pick that. We come back to the seven on the third string, seven and seven and, and eight on the first. And that's also um, a D chord, but that's a D7. We have the D, the F sharp, and the C natural there. Key of D major would have a C sharp. Oh, that's a pretty chord. That's a D major seven. No, we've got the dominant seven. That's the bluesier kind of sounding one. So one and two and three and four back to this chord and one and two and three and four so that was bar 10 and 11 okay um i'm moving a little quicker with this one based on feedback from my other videos if i'm moving too fast please let me know um but obviously uh make good use of youtube you can slow these things down uh and um, and of course, grab yourself the transcription if you remember, if you're a member. Sounds like I'm saying if you remember. Um, so now we're into bar 12. I'll play into bar 12 from uh, the beginning of the, where we play D. So, hmm. here's bar 12. So we're now playing the 7 and the 5. And we're getting into the licks now. So um, in bar 12, that's also just part of D major. F sharp and A. One and two. Uh, one and two. Three and four. Okay. Three and four. So that's bar 12. And now we get to bar 13. We start to get to these really interesting licks. Okay. Now, you can practice this again. You can watch the cover that I did. A lot of these I actually did get right. I didn't get everything right, but I got a lot of these bits right. Um, these repeated licks that are just sort of played at a repetitive... In, in, it's hard to explain, but they're played in such a repetitive way that the, the rhythm moves across different beats. So we're not sort of going one and two, one and, uh, one and two, three and four. What happens is the emphasis and where he's picking is constantly changing within the beats of the bar, okay? Sometimes it's on a beat, sometimes it's off a beat. Very challenging um, to, it was extremely challenging to notate. Um, but if I just play that and count it, uh, I'll see how we go. Uh, one E and, no, I don't think I can do that. One E and two 
and uh, three and four E and one. Yeah. Okay, that's actually really hard for me to do. I'm just gonna play it for you. It's gonna be a little easier and I'll try and give you a bit of a tap. Three, four. Okay, so that was actually across bars 13, 14, uh, and onto bar 15. I finished on the one of 15, but there's actually no note there. So let me just play that for you again. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, wow, I counted that one. There you go. Can you see how that rhythm and the way that cycles is actually very challenging? It, uh, I could see how that was very challenging when I was trying to notate it. So, so it's all just hammering the five and the seven. It's not complicated, but rhythmically, it's very interesting. So that's bar 13 and 14. We're into bar 15 now. And you got to move very quickly to get to the uh, the E. So just like we played the D chord before, we're now playing uh, this E chord. Okay, so we're we're up here and one and two and three four one two and three four. Okay, so that's fifteen and sixteen. I'll play it again. One and two and three four one two and three four. All just on that E chord. Not too important how you strum it because it's not fast. It's not technically demanding. Okay, as long as you get that rhythm right. So again, listen to the cover, listen to the song. Okay. Bar seventeen. We move. We come back to a D seven based idea. So we're grabbing the F sharp and the C. One and two and three four. Nice and easy. Okay, and then we're on to bar 18 and the chord returns to an A here and we're doing another one of these leaks. Okay, actually that lick continues. That lick does continue, I'm going to do that again for you. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, ah. Well, nearly got there. Okay, really hard to count and play it at the same time. I apologize. So that goes from bar 18, 19, 20, and 21. You're basically doing this combination of... Okay, just like that. Again, listen to the recording. Try to match it. Get it into your head first. If The saying is, if you can't hum it, you can't strum it. I also like to say, if you can't sing it, you can't string it. Okay, so... Um, I know I sound silly, but that's how I learn these songs. That's how I get them down. I spend that time getting them in my head. And, and this was probably one of the most challenging ones. Not technically the most challenging, but it's like learning another language. I'm actually learning Italian at the moment and probably it was probably even easier than learning this it's probably even easier than learning this song so there you go now um, once we finish that lick that takes us to bar 21 we're now into bar 22 at this point the chorus has taken off he's singing you know raw deal um, so we've got double stops now from the fifth fret one and two and three and four and That's it. So the rhythm over 22 and 23. That last one. I apologize, that last one. So I'm going to do that again. So we've come off the... Okay, so a little bit of that um, reminds me a lot of uh, Rock Around the Clock. It's got that... That sort of thing. So you can see that that era, there was, you know, a, a real variety of stuff going on. And I believe this was over at the on the capital side of the recordings where things were a little bit more raw. Um, again, courtesy of Michael Bodd, that information. Uh, I wish I could sort of process it and articulate it better, but I'm here to teach you the guitar and I kind of decided to stick with that a little bit more. I was looking through all the information about it, you know, the muscle shoals and all that this morning. I thought, you know what? This is for someone else to do. I'm just going to be quiet and teach you guys how to play. And I'm failing at the keeping quiet part, I know. So I'll keep moving. We are into bar 24. Okay, so uh, 22 and 23 was... Now we've got the D, it goes over the D chord. So that was all over A still. We've got... 
Um, and that is the uh, seven and seven and the five, okay? And that's just fragments of a D major chord. Nothing complicated at all. And I love that stuff. I mean, there's a great jazz player, George Van Epps, uh, who talks about how even in just one chord, you've got a whole bunch of combinations by grabbing different strings. And there's just a little bit of that going on here. It's just grabbing little clumps of the D7, of the D chord, sorry. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, okay? Uh, hopefully you can follow that okay. I'm just striking the third and second up on the first, down on the first, up on the third and second. Um, then the next bar, down on the third and second, up on the second, picking the first and second now. Okay, you can hybrid pick it, whatever you like. The next bar, very, very similar, but we're doing it from A now. So that was bar 26 and 27. Okay, very similar thing to what we did in 24 and 25. Um, I'm going to play everything uh, up to there. I'll even, we can even go from the, those are the wild little licks again. Let's have a go from where that chorus kind of starts. So. Okay, so that was... 26 and 27. Yeah, just drag out those last two. Three, four, just like that. Then we're into the, uh, on the E. Uh, messed up the syncopation there. So let me just show you that chord. For bar 28, we're holding the 6. We're holding 7, 7, 7 flat. This is an E9 chord, okay? An E9 chord is an E dominant 7 chord. We could also just call it an E7 chord, um, but we've also got the, so here's the, the third of E, G sharp. Here's the, the D, which is a flat seven. Okay. When we have a flat seven, we don't have to say it's an E flat seven. We just call it an E7. Okay. Don't ask me why. It's just the way it is. And then we have the F sharp here, which is the ninth degree. So we've added the ninth degree to the seven chord. We end up just calling it an E9. Okay. So we're picking the... Uh, the fourth string and we're strumming right across the sevens that you're barring with the third finger if you like or you can play any way you like so one and and then two and three and so we're picking first second third just like that um sorry let me get that right one and okay so you can see it's a slightly more alternate picking pattern um, in the second half of that next bar Okay, just on those first two strings there. Um, and then into bar 30, we've got... Just like that. So that's bar 31. And two, three, and four. And yeah, that's better. So that rhythm, I'm going to play that for you again. So that's... So again... That's got a real feel to it, a real vibe to it if you, if you catch it in your ear. Um, initially, when I read it, I just read it incorrectly and played it wrong for you, <laughs> which I'm doing a little bit today. I must apologize. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Then we start the solo, okay? That's five, seven, five. I'm going to try and stream through this. You've got YouTube. You can go back and have a look. I'll just try to walk through it at a steady pace, um, knowing you can use that technology. So here we go. Here's the guitar solo, guys. Two, three. Alright, let's look at the first four bars of the, the guitar solo. We're working off, I guess, very much a, a, an A minor pentatonic here, okay? Eight, five, eight, hammer five to eight and pull it off. Go to the eight on the second string, then hammer the five to eight. We're back, we're on to um, bar 33 now. Five, eight, then we hammer five to eight, pull back to the fifth, go to the eight on the first string, and then fifth on the first. 
Okay, so there's, here's the first two bars. We're into the third, coming into the third bar on the end of the four. We're on that eight. Now we're bar three here, bar 34, I should say, bar three of the solo. Hammer five to eight, pull off. Then we roll across to five. And we just play five, 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 five. So that whole line. That's better. Yeah. Okay. Let's do, let me do that one more time. Sorry. No. Try again. It's much easier for me to play this at full speed along with the solo than it is to break it down sometimes. I'm doing my best. Here we go. Ah, oh, I didn't play the lick going in. That's why it's not calculating. So from bar 31, one, two, three. Okay, so that was through bar 35. Nothing complicated. We're just sort of riding on that fifth. That rhythm was perfect that time. That's the best example for you to listen to, um, aside from you know listening to the original. So we're into bar 36 now. I might just bring the computer down. I've got the paper there and I've got the screen down here as well. So because the paper's a little bit hard to read from the distance that allows the stand to be clear of the camera. So here we go. Um, we're coming into bar 36 now. Okay, and that's where you get these cool slides there. So the good news is this isn't too complicated, um, and because it's repetitive, you're about to cover a couple of bars fairly quickly by just learning the, the one lick. So we're picking the six and the six on the third and second, sliding to the sevens like that, and I pick down, and then I pick up on the first string, holding the fifth fret. So, and that's for two bars. One and two and three and four, a one and two and three and four, okay? Uh, I, I've got, got it continuing right through the bar, um, but I he might pull that up on the four. Like that. I think I've got it basically going. And then into the, into the next bar. Either, you know, either way works really well. Um, if you hear anything different when you're, when you're learning the song from my transcription, um, don't, don't feel conflicted. Do whatever you, you feel comfortable with, okay? I would say this is about 90, 8.5% accurate, maybe 99, but that 1% when there's a thousand notes could be at least 10, 10 mistakes. So we're into bar 38 now and we're sliding the, the exact same idea, but this time we're playing um, the fifth fret and the fourth fret and we're sliding into uh, the fifth and sixth like that. So five and four into five and six, sorry, six and five, I should say, five and four into six and five. So we slide it and we pick up on the fifth fret again. So that one definitely stops on the four. Um, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, and then the last one uh, is just the same as what we did for the D, but from two frets higher being an E chord. So these are just, it's just a blues basically, um, this whole song. And you can kind of see the little forms of the different chords. So if this is D, this is E, because we've got the root note, we've got the third, we've got the five. Just a good old major chord. Very inventive, very simple, but very creative at the same time. So eight and eight into nine. But we don't do it for the two whole bars. We do one, two, three, four, one, two. We just finish with that little rhythm on the seven there. Okay, uh, so that was bars 40 and 41. We're into bars 42 now. Um and I'm just going to play this again. It's that same concept of playing the five and the eight and then the five and the eight on the other string like we did earlier. So it's. Okay. And I'll just check. Yeah, that's it there. So that's bar 42 and 43. So the important thing with all of those licks is just getting that tempo of the pull-offs. They're quite quick. Okay, um, so that took us through 42 and 43. We're into verse two now. We get a bar of not playing anything. I could not hear anything in the recording, so I eventually just went, well, this, you know, is what it is. It's possibly nothing there. So there was a 44, you don't have to do anything. You can take a breather. Bar 45, we get this little lick. Um, 
Okay, just a little A major chord. Just like that. Um, so that's really cool. That is literally just out of an A chord. Just like that. Um, so we're, and, and the trick with this one too is kind of rake across like. I hope my hand hasn't been covered up by the microphone the whole time, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so we're picking from the fourth string. Practice this little raking motion. You can do it without playing a chord, just like that. Then we add this, and you kind of want to roll your fingers across. Don't lift them, just relax them as you don't use them. So squeeze, relax, but squeeze the next one. Relax, squeeze the next one. So three, two, one, and don't lift them because you'll get this. We don't want that. We just want to roll. Like imagine you're kneading dough a little bit. Okay, so that's that lick there. Um, then we're into bar 46, and we're back to our twiddly, our twiddlies, we'll call them twiddlies, twiddly. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to bring that one down a little bit so I can see clearly what's going on. So bar 46 into 47, we've got... Alright, so we're on the second string. And then we roll that five to that five, eight five. Um, into bar 48, we've got this D7. Slight, coming into the bar, so just a little early. So we come off the, and that's the one there. So we're sliding into the seven. Okay, I think I overplayed that, let's do that again. So. Um, again, into 48. That's better. 48 and 49 go like that, guys. So, um, one more time. And full speed, so. I'm pretty sure on the cover I didn't nail this section. It was a little loose. So, listen to the original recording more than my cover there. Um, next bar... Uh, we're, we're still playing on the D type idea. Just like that. So that's, uh, again, however you want to hold that, that D7, that D chord. I changed my fingering then. Um, so I'll go again from bar 47. So we've got... Alright, so there's that extra bar of D. So all the bars of D um, in the in these various sections in the verse, they're three bars, and some and so they can feel a little bit strange. Um, but again, that's the hillbilly, the, that hillbilly kind of vibe, you know. Um, they got in there, they wrote songs the way they heard them, and and you had these um, odd changes. You see it in some of the Marty Robbins tunes as well, um, and some of the Elvis stuff. There's an extra bar here and there, and I just I love that. I reckon that's really cool. So bar 51, we've got two beats. We don't really have to do anything, so you can, little break. Uh, so one, two, three, and then coming in uh, to the fourth beat, we sort of slide on to the, the fifth fret on the second string like this. Okay, just three to five. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Sort of anticipate that four. There's a lot of things in this recording that, uh, you know, they're just sort of a little bit ragged. That's just another example. You know, sometimes he's really pushing the beat and it can be tricky to notate. Um, but it's there nonetheless and it, and it makes sense on the page there. So bar 51, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then we do this rundown. Hit the last two together. My apologies. Um, so you've already seen that leak before. We saw it uh, early in the first verse. So very clever when a guitar player references themes from earlier in the song. I really like that. It shows that it's very improvised, but they have a deep understanding of creating themes throughout a tune. Really, really cool. Um, this is this is highly evolved guitar playing. I know the whole hillbilly thing um, sometimes insinuates that you know a little bit of simplicity, but couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, Chet Atkins. You know, where did he come from? He's uh, He was uh, out there in the sticks and, you know, heard Mel Travis playing and thought Mel Travis was using a whole bunch of fingers when he was actually only using one. So 
poor Chet there got in there and learnt to use a whole bunch of fingers, much to his um, benefit in the long run. Bar 53. So bar 53, okay. Now, this next two bars, uh, again, not particularly specific, but he's sliding uh, into the fifth fret and hitting the first string open, and that's the lick that we're getting there. And this goes for nearly three whole bars, so we've got one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, just like that in the third bar, sort of eases it off. Let's it ring for a little bit. Um, that's bar 53, 54, and 55, okay? And then in 56, he returns back to... Does the, does the lick again. Okay. So if I play through that whole section again, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Just like that, okay? Okay, so have a listen to the recording. You can you can hear what's going on there. Hopefully you can see what I'm playing. The very last thing there, I pick the fourth fret and bend up to get the to match the pitch of the first string. Okay, and that's a that's a really cool sound. Uh, so we get to another chorus, and you get this really cool lick here. So that bend and that open first string rings out through bar 57, 58. We don't play anything. 59, we get this really cool major pentatonic lick, okay? So just from this... Um, good old major pentatonic scale. You'd practice that and think, how would I use that? Well, let Junior Thompson show you. So we've got this... Um, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 6, 4, 6, 5, 7, 5, and 7, 5, like that. Let me play that for you. Two, three, four. Okay, and he plays it quite quick. That took a fair bit of practice, so when I played along with the cover and I followed that along on the sheet, my fingers knew what to do because it, it happens pretty quick. Okay. Again, hum it and you can strum it. If you can hear it in your head, it'll help you a lot being able to play it. Make sure you're alternating the pick throughout, okay? Six four six four six five seven five seven five six four six five seven five seven five, alternating all the way. Okay, it will help a lot. It's going to be very hard for you to play that at full speed if you're not alternating the pick. So at this point, I'll take the opportunity to mention the Patreon again. If you're enjoying this and you're working through it, uh, and you'd like the transcription, jump on the Patreon. You can join for a couple bucks a month. Okay. Obviously, the more you support, the better for me, but I'm happy with uh, anyone that's on there and happy to, you know, get those transcriptions out to people. They're, they're on the attachments of all the posts that I've put out, uh, and I've put out uh, something like 80 posts last year. So you can imagine there's a lot of material up there, okay? Bar 62, we've got the D7 chord. One and two and... Th uh, let's try that again. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and... Watch that right hand. Okay, it's really test my reading sometimes. I have to read these rhythms because when they're not in muscle memory, they're not, um, I have to read them. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Do yourself a favor, try and catch what I'm doing there. One and two, so that's one up, two up, down, four up, one up, two up, down, up. Okay, because then we get this constant rhythm. Da -da -da -da. You see that right hand's always flowing. Really helpful. Don't worry if you can't perfect that if you can nail the rhythm, but it does help, okay? So we're holding that D7 again. Um, all right, so that's 62, 63. Now we're into bar 64, okay? One and two. And we come off that chord and work into those licks again. So bar 64. A little bit of a tricky adjustment. Five eight five eight five eight five. Okay, bar sixty five. Okay, we've uh, we're now back at the A chord. By the way, I should have mentioned that because we were working over the D chord. 
Um, bar 65. That's it, yeah. One. And da, 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 da. Da, bar 66. Da, 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 da. Okay, so again, you see these licks a lot and it's really up to you how close you want to get into the recording. I am essentially walking you through them at that accurate level. You'll need the recording there to hear it as well to then play it at full speed or check out the cover that I've done. For the most part, it was pretty accurate. So I'll go from 64 and I'll play through the next couple of bars. So we've got... Okay, and now we're up to bar 68. And here we walk into the Travis picking section. Wow, we finally got there. It's, it's a huge lot of work. If you're just revisiting this video and working through a couple of these licks from time to time, I, I really hope you get a lot out of this. So, 68. 5, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 6, 7. Okay. 5, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 6, 7. O, two, four. Okay, I'll leave it to you to work out the strings. I obviously wasn't telling you the strings, but I'm sure you can see what's going on there. Okay, so we come off that bar where we hit, um, we hit that seven, and then we do this walk up. O, two. Use your first finger so you can get into position. Okay, so now we're up here and we're holding this A type chord, okay? It's gonna be really important we get both hands happening now, so we actually pinch together. I put my pinky down on the seven there, so I'm picking fifth and first. I'm picking fourth string and second string together, um, and I'm holding seven, six, five, five, I should mention that. I add the pinky here, okay? And I'm pinching those together. So we're first beat, then we pick fourth and second together. Then I pick the sixth string and the first string together. Then I pick the fourth string and the second string again. So that was bar 70. Bar 71, fifth, and, fifth string and first string. Now, as soon as I pick that, we've got to hit that second string. So, so we do this one, we do that, and then we hit the fourth string again, like that, so. So let me play the first bar. Okay, see how that, that beat came, that note there, that seven came on the off beat. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and. So after we hit that, we don't stop, we don't rest, we go straight to the first string. So this is almost like a roll. So this is bar 71. Okay, so. Hit the first string, hit the fifth string again, hit the second string, and finish with the pick on the fourth. So, just like that, okay? So, I missed a note. Okay, and you'll notice that time I didn't alternate back to the sixth string. You've got a couple options here, guys. You can sort of always alternate like like that, um, but I noticed in the recording it wasn't 100% accurate all the time for him to do that strict alternating. Sometimes he went back to the sixth string on beat three, sometimes he just hit the fifth string again on beat three, so. That's exactly what I could hear in the recording. So that's bar 70 and 71. Bar 72, we're still holding that A form, we put the eighth fret on the first string, a uh, pinky on the eighth fret of the first string, pink the pick, pinch, the fifth and first, pick the uh, fourth string on the second beat, um, and then we're picking the fifth again in the first, and we're sort of doing a roll again, so get that second finger straight onto the, onto the second string over here, whilst our pinky comes back to there, so, and, and then you hit that fourth string to finish up that bar, so, All right, and then we push that finger out, And then it's just crotchet, so one, two, three, four. Do not get the temptation to try and practice that bass line separately and then add the stuff in. It doesn't work. T 
Tommy Emmanuel teaches that in one of his tutorials. Amazing player, but um, I just don't agree with that methodology because you're going to literally be trying to do two things at once. You're better off just learning the events as they come. Eventually, you can develop that independence, but I guess that's a whole other lesson. In fact, I will be covering that uh, again shortly. Okay, so that's that's that four bars there of the Travis picking. Hopefully, you can put that together through the slow work we just did. Um, then we come up to bar 74. We're holding this D7 chord like that. That's meant to be a five on the transcription. Okay, so we're holding this D7. We're picking fifth and first, fourth and second. Let me explain that D7 chord. My apologies. You're probably sitting there going, what's the chord you're holding? Five, seven, five, seven, five. Okay, so we bar across. We get the five, we get the seven, we get the five, we get the seven. It's just a regular D7 chord. Okay, so we pick the fifth and first, pick the fourth and second. We pick the sixth and the first, and my first finger just kind of crawls across there to the sixth string. So, and again, we do the sort of roll thing here where we pinch fifth and first, pull the second finger on the second string, pick falls onto the fourth, get the third finger going on that first string, back to the fifth string, okay? And then we hit the seven, on the second string and we rest on the four there okay just like that so so we've got just like that okay pinch 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 roll we finish on the four by resting that just like that okay so bar 75 one more time really slow okay once it starts rolling, just look at it as I'm picking, I'm using my finger, I'm picking, I'm using my finger. Don't get too bogged down in the, oh, I'm playing a bass and notes. You sort of just think of it as one line and it will come together. Bar 76, we actually return back to the A shape with the pinky on the eighth fret there. So A shape, add the pinky. And then, uh, so we're pinching fifth and first, striking the fourth, pinching fifth and first again, but lift the pinky roll okay so pull that in the middle and strike that seventh fret there on the fourth string so and bar 77 I already started it there pick the fourth string pick the sixth string pick the fourth string nice and easy bar 78 we're holding that E9 shape from before but you also want the seven on the fifth string so seven six seven 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 pinch the fifth and first Pick the fourth string, pick the sixth string, and we get that little roll there. So, boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, and so I'm picking the second string, and I'm hitting the fourth. You'll notice sometimes I put a little bracketed note uh, on the third string because every now and then you can kind of hit that fourth string a little bit harder and hit two strings. So, just like that. So, bam. Just like that, okay? Then we take that idea that we just did, so we pick fifth and first, pick the, the fourth, pick the sixth and roll, we'll pull that second in there, fall on the on the sixth, brushing the third string as well, as I mentioned. We do the exact same thing here. But this time, actually, it's even easier because it's um, you don't have to do the roll. It is literally fifth and first. Oh. Uh, it's actually the D7 chord again. So we've come off this D7 Nice and simple. So we're picking fifth and first Striking the second beat or the fourth fret. Oh god, this becomes a mouthful sometimes one two So we're picking the fourth string pinching sixth and second Hitting the fourth and third with the pick just like that and Then we go back to the A shape for Bar 80. Okay, so bar 80, pinch, pick the fourth, pick the sixth, roll the second uh, string, hit the fourth, and um, just realized that's better.
better. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I actually uh, I switch around and use different fingers as I please, um, and that's because I've been doing that for 20 years. But I would prefer you to definitely be using your third finger and then using your second to grab that second string as, as required. So one, two, three, and four, and then pinch fifth and first and just walk through. Okay, and that's it. That's the Travis picking part, which is you know um, huge because you you're getting to you know learn so many little techniques, lead lines, little chord fragments, Travis picking. I wish I mentioned that at the start now, but that's okay. Um, final verse of this song. Okay, uh, again, we've got a lot of syncopation and a lot of crazy wild things happening. Up to you how accurate you want it. I'll just I'll give you a rough idea at a nice tempo here. So. Um, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so that's bar 82 and 83. We're sliding into the five. We're bending into the pitch of five. Then sliding back up to the five. So. Just like that, okay. Um, bar 84. And obviously, we've got that first string open too, underneath it. We sort of repeat the same thing. But this time, we bend a little earlier. So the first time around. Really listen to the recording. I had to listen to that about a thousand times to catch those two bars because they're so similar. But that little bend comes in a little earlier the second time around in 84. So... And that takes into bar 85 where you let that down and you just sort of hit those again and we jump back to a uh, well it says on the it says on the transcription here it's actually got a d7 chord um, but you're not meant to play that unfortunately the program puts that in where there's a rest sometimes when I label the chord so ignore that I can ignore that um, so then um, we go into bar 86, the chord changes to a D7 at that point, but we don't follow it. We get this great little lick here between 86, in, in from bars 86 to 87. So we go one, two, and three, and three, five, three, five, three, five, seven, five, like that. Okay, so. It's up to you how you play it, whether you want to slide up that 5 to 7 or whether you want to move the first finger up, but the lick is, so from bar 86, 1, 2, and, th sorry, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, E, and 2, and 3, and 4, and, okay, and then we get into bar 88, we start these again. But this time, so on the one, we actually go to the seven on the second string. Five, seven, five. And that's really cool because uh, it's a little different to the pentatonic thing. This time he's referencing the F sharp from the D chord. So I'll go from 86 again. It's hard sometimes because these licks are kind of like one really long continuous idea. So one two, three, and four, and one E, and two, and three, and four, and... Okay, now we're into bar 89, and we start doing these. Yeah, so this bar here, a little tricky. Really fast, it goes into the probably some of the fastest picking in the whole song. Must be alternating. Okay, so we're going one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. So I'm sliding the four to the five. Try and look at that a couple of times to hear the syncopation. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Then we pretty much do a bar of just straight fives. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and. Okay, uh, so that goes. Um, and then at the end of that bar, you sort of hit the four and bounce into this for the next bar. Uh, the next bar is a lot easier, believe me. So we've got this. 
Bar 89. Again. Again, one of these things, how accurate do I want to teach you this? How, how deep do we go with perfecting that? I think when I played the cover, I literally just kind of went... I just kind of made it up through that section knowing roughly what he'd played, to be honest. So I'd almost feel remiss to make you guys learn it in, in the detail that I transcribed it, but this is what it will be. It'll be... Um, just like that. Then we've got... To finish the end of that little passage, okay? Uh, again, it's dropped the chord in beat one of bar 93. You don't, you absolutely don't play that D7. It's an automation thing that's a bit of an issue sometimes for me when I'm transcribing. I will try to fix that. Um, but if it does come up and you do see it because you've got an early rendition of it, that's why. Bar 94. This is very much worth mentioning here, okay? Um, so I'll just scroll back slightly to 93. We've come off the... That little rhythm on the double stops on the five. Um, and one, two, three, four. And then we slide up to nine and 10. So this is 94. One, two, three, and four. And we slide up to the 10. So one, two, three. And then on the end of bar one, okay, in bar 95, you do this little lick here where you play the two nines and you pull downwards on the nine on the second string to get that tenth fret. So that was all a big mouthful, but hopefully you're following that. I'll just play it one more time from 94. One, two. That's it there, okay? Again, have the link up with the original song, have the cover up, reference all of it. This is a big project. If you've come this far, huge hats off. Huge hats off now. Imagining a huge hat. Okay, so we've got the last chorus. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You're familiar with that now. Um, we're just holding the five in the open the open string, open first string. Bar 98, one and two and three and four and uh, bar 99, one and two and three and four and one. But this is bar 100 now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. That was bar 100 and 101. Okay, in bar 101, when we go one and two and three and four and get to that five at the end of the bar and start doing twiddlies again. So from bar uh, 101 till the end, we get this one and two and three and four. And that's, that's the end of the song. So uh, what's actually going on there? Uh, we've, I've covered what happens in 101 with the chord. The ah, one and two and three and four and, and then eight, five, eight, eight, five, eight. So that's, the, that's into 105 and then we do this little walk up. A, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Very cliche ending, so um, with the G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A, so. And then we finish with this really great little chord here, F sharp, B, E, and A. With the A at the bottom. And that actually becomes, um, I believe, an A, six, nine. Beautiful chord. So we've got the six, we've got the nine. Yep, an A, six, nine. Wonderful way to finish the tune, okay? So, really hard work, a huge song, so many things to learn, so many licks, Travis picking double stops, crazy rhythms, chord fragments. This to me is like a, it's like a one-stop shop of rockabilly ideas and licks, and I hope that you've found it that way. Of course, considering joining the Patreon, if you're here at this point, you've worked through it. Um, Michael Bod, thank you again for suggesting it. This has been an epic one, but I know it's worth the work. Um, especially when I get the feedback I get from someone like yourself. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, 
I'll see you in the next video. Please comment and share it. I'll see you later.